go into the game. We're gonna be playing Yone Jungle. And here, I'll show you how much DPS he could do, especially with the new reworked items. In this matchup, we're currently up against Vi, and in Ione versus Vi, this is an advantage for Vi in the early game since her ganks are much stronger and has more damage. But once we get to the late game, Yone will obviously outscale her, so we need to get to that point without being behind. The clear that I'm doing here is gonna be a bot side clear into most likely a full clear. The number one thing that you wanna do with Yone is to get Berserker Boots and Blade of the Ruin King as soon as possible. Once you're able to get these two items, it's gonna be way easier to play this champion. Berserker is already a big help into helping your clear become a bit faster because currently one of Yone's biggest weakness is that he is one of the slowest clears in the game as a jungler. You also have to hope that your team doesn't get destroyed and you're able to scale without any major issues. The reason why I went to the bot side instead of the top side is looking at the lanes. We want to make sure that we can gank the Gwen and there's a high chance Vi is starting at the red side and it's gonna path bot. So that means if we fight at the Scuttler, their Vi should have priority over me. Looking our at our bot side though, Caitlyn and Swain are doing well, getting 2 kills which is huge. The best thing that can happen when you play hyperscaling junglers like Yone is that you get winning lanes. After 3 camps, we just go for the Scuttler. But looking at the top side, we see that Gwen has 1 HP. So what we're planning is as soon as we get this objective, we can just run top and try to kill this Gwen. We don't have our third skill yet because we want to prioritize farm your camps. I make a bit of a mistake here. I should have flashed for the kill. In the end, Gwen just got executed. We could have gotten the free 300 gold, but it's fine. The most important thing here is that Vi doesn't get any successful ganks and we don't get counter jungled. As you can see, Yone's clear is super slow, but once you're able to get items, it's gonna be one of the fastest. While looking at the map, we see that Vi is at the bot side. As expected, she went for a red side clear into a full clear, then looking to gank our bot late. You wanna play selfish when using this champion because you are a hyper carry and you need as much gold as you can. If in case you have losing lanes, the best thing to do is just keep farming. Worst case scenario is that you go to the side lane and tax your teammates if they if you think that they can't bring anything good for the team. Gwen gets another kill onto the Riven. Not really good on our end because Gwen is also good at the late game. Vi shows up at, at the top side looking to dive the Riven. At least we're here to prevent that from happening. Vi knowing that I'm at the top side, pretty sure she won't go for a dive anymore. And with this back, we buy Berserker's Boots and start to clear our bot side camps yet again. Caitlyn Swain doing a good job winning the lane against Draven Lulu. If we get the Draven behind, then that's gonna be really good since he wouldn't be able to snowball the game. Instead of clearing the Raptors though, I see that they're low so I try to look if I can sneak gank bot side. Unfortunately, they went back. Vi sees me, but we can contest this. She has no more spells or flashes, so we use our ult to be able to catch up to the Orn, and in the end, we're able to get a kill. Really good that we prevented Vi from ganking the locks. Even better that we get a kill so that we could buy our Blade of the Ruin King. We go back to our camps. The next thing that we want is Blade of the Ruin King. This is a huge power spike for Yone. It would give him all of the stats that he needs, and it would allow him to burst squishy targets in one combo. What I do here is that seeing that the bot lane is overextended, I take two stacks on my Q, third skill, first skill, get the knockup onto the Draven. Even with the Draven Flash and Lulu Polymorph, he gets to live, but it's fine. With Draven having zero spells, our bot lane should have no problem taking down the tower. Our Raptors is gone, I think. If I took it, I don't remember, but it's fine. We go back. Bork is not yet available because we went for the Berserker's Boots. 
And looking at the lane state, Vi goes for a bot gank. If our Caitlyn Swain loses the trade, we're most likely gonna go for the Herald instead, which is okay. Because when you're playing hyperscaling junglers, you could go for either objective. Yep, Draven getting a double kill. We have no choice but to go for a trade. Herald helps to get our items faster so that we could carry our teammates later on. I'm getting contested by this Gwen and Orn. I have no idea where my team is. I have to use my third skill and we juke the Gwen plus juke the Orn using our third skill to go back plus ulti. I'm just buying time waiting for my team to help. When they arrive, we should be able to get at least two kills. But with this Vi showing up, kind of a flip if she shows. We take this with no problem. Lux and Riven were super late, but in the end, at least we're able to get the objective. Meanwhile, Draven is pushing bot. It's fine. What we just want to get here is the first tower, plus plates. Bork is almost up. And the new Bork is favorable for Yone. Because even though you get less HP, it's worth it. Because it's much cheaper, allowing you to buy this item earlier. And once you're able to buy this item earlier, you would get a faster power spike. Borg is now available. We just want to clear this Gromp. Look for a possible gank topside because Gwen is overextended. Position ourselves for Gwen to play greedy. But in the end, maybe I don't gank the Gwen since she's just going back. Blade of the Ruin King now available. Big power spike. Seeing that there's a fight on the bot side, our Gwen gets yoinked. We have to force a trade here. 3v3 should be fine. We stack up our Q. Third skill, first skill, ready. Catch the Draven who's in the backside. Get a shutdown onto their ADC. We go back because of the third skill. And overall, it's a 2 for 1 trade at the bottom side. Really good. And this is the power of Blade of the Ruined King. Now we have so much damage. If we're able to get a double knockup onto any squishy target, we should be able to burst them in one combo. Of course, even though we have Blade of the Ruined King, this power spike doesn't end yet. I still don't have my crit items. So the next thing that I'm gonna go for is either Bloodthirster or Infinity Edge, giving me even more damage. Orn is overextended. We could look for a catch onto him. Nice slow by the Swain. I have my third skill to chase just in case. With Vi showing up. We just wanna burst down this Orn. I get ultied but she's out of position. We should be able to take her down as well. And their whole team is randomly here. So we have to wait for my third skill to be up. Because I'm gonna get bursted if I make a mistake. We stack up our first skill again. Third skill's available. Start with the ulti to get a kill. And then a knock up onto the Lulu. Such a beautiful play. We just won a 4v5 team fight pretty cleanly. We get an ace. And instead of going for the Blood Tracer, you know what? We just go all in. Infinity Edge. Double Ruin item. Minus 200 HP. It's fine. We have Overgrowth. And the best way to mitigate the minus HP is just burst them in one combo. Now we have some crit. Plus a lot of damage. We just need to be careful of our positioning because we have a lot of minus HP due to the ruined items. Mid lane, there's a fight that's happening. So we position ourselves to help. Get a knock up onto the Lulu. Immediately burst her. Good snare by the locks. And yeah, this is basically what you want to do with Yone in the mid game. Always look for stacks before going in with your third skill. You never want to go in without your third because your third skill is basically a get out of free jail card. We have our stacks again. Third skill, look for the knockup. It expires. Warren is left out of position. Forced to go back, but it's fine. At least we scared the opponents. And this is the power spike that I was saying. One more crit item should give me even more damage. 100% crit will make this champion super scary. Dragon is spawning in 14 seconds. I'm just waiting it. I'm just waiting for it to spawn. With it being up in 5 seconds, we have stacks again. 
Draven is out of position. But with having no more Q, maybe we could catch him with ulti. Nah, it's too risky. If they see my position and they wait for me there, I'm just insta-dead. Riven, I have no idea why she's pushing top. With another 4v5, Swain is going in. Tanking a lot of damage. Use my third skill, Q ult. Even though we got ulted by Vi, we're able to access the backline. Immediately go back to safety. Vi goes down, we flash in. Take the objective for ourselves. And yeah. Really good team fighting with Swain tanking everyone. We're able to take the dragon for ourselves. Despite it being a 4v5. That's why when you play strong champions like Yone, it's best that you have a frontline. So that they can tank the enemy while you deal damage to their backline. We go back to our own jungle, get more farm. Once we have BT, we should have the 100% crit plus even more lifesteal. Another kill onto the mid lane. Riven takes the tier 2 top tower. And we, as soon as we see another fight, we stack our Q yet again. We have our third skill. Get a double knock up. Gwen, really low. Just auto attack. So much damage. She dies. I don't know how. Maybe ignite or red buff. We're able to help our team. I have ulti just in case. I'm just waiting for my third skill to guarantee. We win the fight. Pretty good. Third skill ulti. Catch the Vi and then immediately go back. Unfortunately, she lives with 1 HP. It's fine. This should open up the inhibitor tower for us to take with one cannon minion. Playing a bit scared because they're alive. Good team fight. We get everything that we need. Take a bit of their jungle. Maybe blue is up. We can also counter jungle. Give it to Caitlyn. Scuttler is also up. But with the opposing team trying to chase us down, we stack, stack up our Q. Not worth trading our life for the Scuttle. Position ourselves with the third skill. Nice bind by the Lux plus Snare on the Swain. Just kite them. Looking for a good way to entry. We stack up our Q. Third skill is now up. We have a knock up. Good bind by the Lux again. Even though we get poked down a bit, we're able to deal enough damage to at least take down two of their members. Even though we are also low and we haven't gotten back to base, a lot of good plays all around. And we get our next item, Bloodthirster. Now this is the biggest power spike of Yone. Once you complete these three items, you should be able to burst anyone even if they are a tank champion. Infinity Edge giving more crit. Combining it with the 100% crit that we have, we should deal massive damage to the enemy team. The only thing we need to be worried about is our durability. Once we get caught, we're instantly just gonna die. Gwen out of position. Get an ulti. Three man. But with this, I get ultied by Vi plus knock up by Orn. I couldn't go back. I just said the weakness of this Yone build. And yeah, the moment you get CC'd, you're just dead for free. Swain is still tanking so much damage while Caitlyn locks dealing damage from the backline. We lose our streak, but at least we're still winning the fight. Nice stasis by the locks. In the end, it's a 2 for 3 trade. Possible Baron, but I'm still dead, so not surprised if they won't go for it. That's why whenever you go in, even though you have your third skill, you always want to make a calculated play and make sure that they can't stun lock you. Another item I could have gone is QSS, but Zonio is much safer overall. I just need to make sure that my engages are not punished. We're up again. We just take our buffs. Look at my damage onto my Q. 600, one hit, 700. And that's even with Yone's passive that decreases my crit damage. Bye. Fight happens topside. We're a bit out of position, but we should be able to arrive on time. Next dragon is gonna spawn in 20. I have no idea why they're fighting at the top. So we go around. Maybe we can go for a flank. Riven is busy split pushing. Swain flashing in. No one dies. It's fine. We just wanna take the dragon, I guess. Orn getting binded. Yep. The issue here is that Swain has no more mana. 
Flux has no more HP and the opponents are able to reset. We have to play a bit uh, safe here just in case they contest but good thing they didn't contest. We get the free dragon. There's no soul but it's fine. Lulu out of position. Maybe we can catch her with the ult. Yep. Immediately stasis because I remembered what happened last time. But maybe I could have just went back and then Lulu dies. It's fine. We just want to take care of ourselves. Get a bit of HP plus lifesteal. Or stack our Q rather. My team just running it down. Katyn. Pretty good damage. Draven, the only one left. Flash in. Burst him and just WQ. With their Nexus exposed, maybe we can go for an end. Vi is still trying to clear the wave. Most likely, we're just gonna go for the Baron. Good wave clear on their part. But at this point, we're already overfed. We could probably just burst the Vi if she goes for a steal. Life steal a bit. Caitlyn in the backside, waiting for their jungle. Yup, nice trap. So we wanna burst the Vi as fast as possible. But with me being low HP, I think it's a bad position for us. And we just got Uno reverse card. Instead of killing the Vi, she was able to take us down. With my team arriving though, we get some backup. Take down their jungler. Lulu also goes down. Gwen is uh, playing a bit greedy. Swain is just tanking everyone. I don't know why the Swain is so tanky. Maybe they don't have any MR or something. With their jungle down, I'm thinking about starting the Baron. But since I don't have Smite, it's gonna be a bit risky. So what I'll do here instead is I'll just clear my camps, go home, buy my item. And then maybe we can contest the objective again. Lux randomly yoinked my blue. But it's fine, we don't need blue at this point. Last item is gonna be Guardian Angel. The reason why we went Sterax here is because this gives us a free QSS. So for example, we go in, try to burst someone, and then I got Polymorph by Lulu. As soon as my Sterax procs, the Polymorph will get removed, and then I could immediately go back on my third skill. Playing it safe, we don't want to get caught. There's a trap. Vi gets caught by the trap. Try to position myself a bit. Yep, because she was gonna ult me if I stayed. Take down their jungler. Lulu out of position as well. Use our third skill to catch someone. Driven just ran it, ran, ran away. Gwendo, trying to catch our Caitlyn. We're there to help. Dealing so much damage. 300 per auto. Driven goes down as well. The only one that's up is Orn. And even these tanky members, look how much damage I deal. Just destroy him. After getting the ace, we just go to their Nexus. Look for the end and get a win. And yeah, that's how to utilize Yone. You always want to stack up your Q and then go in with your third skill. Catch the carries in the backline and it's GG. Swain gets MVP. You know what? It's fine because he tanked a lot of damage. Even then, we did really well. We outplayed our opponents with a third skill ulti. Dealt a lot of damage and this is the power of the new items on Yone going for triple ruined item. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and peace out. Ciao, ciao. Bye.